Hi, uh, my name is Rachel Lahasky and I am a clinical instructor in the Southern Miss School of Social Work and I am a LCSW social worker. Um, I graduated with my master's from LSU and I am lucky enough to be able to work now, um, recruit, advise, and teach in the Southern Miss School of Social Work. Uh, so Miss Amanda asked me to create a video for you all that detailed a little bit about my background, which is in school social work. Um, and then to also just give you some basic information about what social work is um, and how to get into our program at Southern Miss. Um, so I'm going to include all of that here in this video. I've uh, sent some uh, some handouts and a copy of the PowerPoint um, about school social work to Miss Amanda, so you'll have the opportunity to follow along as I go. And at the end, I will share with you my contact information. So if you want to get in touch with me, set up a time to meet face-to-face -face on campus in our office, or for me to meet with you at Jones, I would be happy to do that. So with that said, my background is primarily in school social work. Um, after I finished graduate school in Louisiana, I worked for Baton Rouge Mental Health, which is one of the largest outpatient mental health facilities in the state of Louisiana. Um, and I worked uh, in the in the school-based part of the agency. They serviced all different ages and populations, but I worked for about seven years in um, the, or about five, five or six years in the school-based part of the agency. And what they did was they hired social workers licensed social workers um, and put them in schools in East Baton Rouge and surrounding parishes and the goal was to work in the schools to provide treatment therapy individual group and family counseling um, to students on our caseload who were diagnosed with an emotional or behavior disorder we also worked very closely with teachers, with families, administrators, and a child psychiatrist that attended the school once a month to complete med checks and psych evaluations. Um, so it was a very important job, I believe, um, and working in schools, reaching kids at that early age um, and in their environment, I think is so important to the success and well-being of, of students. Um, so anyway, that is my passion. And if you look on the second slide of the PowerPoint, it basically starts with what do school social workers do? Um, and so in a nutshell, social workers in schools, and, and it depends on the school, I think it depends on um, the job description and whether or not you're placed at multiple schools or just at one school. Are you hired by an outside agency to be placed in the school or are you hired by the school itself? Um, so I can really only speak on my experience as being placed in a school by this outside agency through Baton Rouge Mental Health. Um, but I worked at a middle school and my job was to maintain a caseload of between 30 and 40 students, all of whom I had the opportunity to diagnose with an emotional or behavior disorder. These were kids that came to me mostly through teacher referrals um, or administrator referrals. There were a couple uh, self-referrals. Um, students came to me saying that they were having an issue, they wanted therapy, they wanted to receive services. And after a very thorough psychosocial assessment, I had the opportunity to determine whether or not they were appropriate for services. Um, so in starting services with these students, every child had to have a very thorough psychosocial assessment, usually completed with the help of a parent. Um, um, and so this gave us the opportunity to collect a really thorough history um, on the child uh, to kind of understand their background, their medical history, their social history, um, and any other types of family diagnoses that um, we would need to know about in terms of working with the child. Um, we wanted to know who else was in the home um, and what stressors were placed on this child or on the family. Um, were they lacking resources? Were they lacking support, community involvement in engagement. All of those things were um, important for us to take into consideration when offering um, therapeutic services to a child in the school. So once the psychosocial was complete and we determined whether or not a child was appropriate for services, we met with that student every single week in an individual group or family session to provide um, some sort of, ther of therapy, of treatment. Um, so some of that included simple um, social skills or anger management. Um, some of it was behaviorally based, so behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral th therapy. Um, we also worked very closely with teachers, uh, guidance counselors, administrators, 
to try to provide um, a safe um, and inclusive environment for the child in the classroom. So maybe the child um, needed help uh, staying seated in the class or m more focused in the class. So we were able to work alongside those teachers and administrators to come up with a plan for the child in the classroom um, so that they were engaged, treated fairly, and their academic needs were taken into consideration um, during the process of classroom management. Some of our kids maybe needed 504 accommodations or even an IEP, an Individualized Education Plan. Um, and so we were able to work with the guidance counselor and with teachers to make sure that their accommodations were being followed and met. Uh, so that was really important. We also provided a lot of education um, to the families in terms of the diagnosis of the child, um, whether it was ADHD, anxiety, depression, things like that, um, and ways that the parent can also provide support and assistance to that child in the home. We worked every single month with a child psychiatrist that came to our school um, and completed psychiatric evaluations on um, all of our students and some of our students it, it was determined um, would be um, better off aside from a, uh, receiving services therapy, um, also receiving medication. Um, so maybe that was ADHD medication or medication to assist with anxiety or depression, depending on the diagnosis. Um, and so we helped to set up all of those appointments for the psychiatrist, and we monitored medication compliance throughout each month so that when the psychiatrist returned, we were able to provide updates on progress. Um, we collected a lot of evaluations from teachers and parents as well because that helped us to determine if the services we were providing um, were effective. Is what we're doing um, working? Um, and then what do we need to improve on to better assist that child? So why is school uh, social work so important? Um, so in my opinion, I think that school social work is so important because it's meeting the child where they are in their environment. Um, you can certainly work in mental health facilities and agencies and clinics, um, and that's all great and very, very important, especially in terms of social work and services provided to families. But in schools, we actually get to go into their environment. We get to see where these kids are every day. We get to um, look at their appearance. We get to see how they're behaving. How are they interacting with teachers, with peers? Um, we get to see parents as they're coming into the school. So it's a really awesome way to meet clients in their environment and to truly see how they're doing every single day, which is also unique for school social work. Um, in a lot of other areas of social work um, or treatment in general, you may not have the opportunity to see kids every day, but in schools you do, and that's really helpful when it comes to treatment. Um, I also think that when you get to get your hands on those kids very early on, um, so as they're young um, and they're, um, they're still very impressionable and vulnerable, um, you have the chance to really help to provide really helpful, important resources to these kids at an early age. Um, so it can almost be seen as a preventative measure in terms of um, helping that kid before they get into the system, before they um, have to go to jail or they have a caseworker or a probation officer before Child Protective Services report is made. Um, you're reaching them early on, you are um, identifying the needs of the child or of the family, and you're trying to provide support right at the very beginning um, before something bigger um, happens. Um, and you can do that in schools. You can do that when these clients are kids and when they're young. Um, and so I think that is certainly unique for school social work and um, really helpful to the job. Um, so how can I get a job as a school social worker? Um, every uh, district, every um, every agency is different, so it really depends. But in general, to get a job as a school social worker, you have to have your master's. And that's because most of what you're going to be doing in the school is therapeutically based. You're doing counseling, um, and you can't counsel without your master's and your license. Um, so it's certainly great to have your bachelor's degree in social work. That gives you um, kind of an added... Uh, strength, I guess, when it when it comes to getting your master's. You've got that really strong foundation academically, and that will help you along your way 
in the master's program. Um, but for jobs, um, you have to have your MSW um, and you have to be willing to take that licensure exam, um, which ethically speaking, you have to be licensed anyway, um, at least in the state of Mississippi, to call yourself a social worker and to practice um, as a social worker. Uh, the next slide goes on to talk about challenges for school social workers. Um, and I think that in general, for any social worker, um, regardless of the setting, one of the top challenges is um, noncompliance. Um, and a lot of that goes back to limited resources. Um, a lot of these families don't have resources. A lot of our clients lack support, lack resources, lack education. And so with that comes noncompliance. Um, and so that's always going to be an issue for social workers and for our clients. Um, it's easy to get frustrated and to blame and to point the finger, but as social workers, we have to really take a good look at the psychosocial issues happening with the client um, and with the family to determine, well, why are they not compliant and where is this coming from and what can we do to improve um, them showing up to meetings to meeting treatment goals um, all of these things because ultimately if they're not meeting treatment goals if they're not compliant if they're not coming to sessions if they're not coming to school um, it's going to impact how successful that client is. Um, and then, of course, also funding. Um, there's never enough funding for mental health resources, um, not just in school social work, but across the board. Um, and so that's something important that we, um, as social workers, always have to fight for uh, on the macro level, on the policy level. Um, legislation and policy impacts the money that we get, the funding that we get. Um, and so that's important to take into consideration as we're studying and considering social work as a potential career. Um, it's not just the micro level hands on stuff we get to do um, because everything that we get to do therapeutically, one on one, individually, goes back to policy. It goes back to um, the macro level piece that social workers uh, do every day um, and fight for and advocate for our clients. So all of that um, will certainly in the long run impact how much funding and community support we get uh, for our clients. Uh, the types of diagnoses we see in school social work vary um, as in any field of mental health, any agency setting. Um, the diagnoses that I saw the most were ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, um, depression, anxiety. Um, I saw some oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorder, so behavioral disorders, uh, and some learning disorders, so issues with reading, with math, comprehension, things like that. Um, I did a little work with some of the special education students, um, so um, we saw some intellectual disabilities, um, things like that, and uh, some adjustment problems. Uh, we also had kids that went through trauma, that experienced trauma, uh, saw death, saw, um, saw a lot of really bad things. Uh, and so we worked with them to, um, to process and to adjust, and we provided a lot of grief therapy and coping um, and a lot of self-esteem, and we worked with those families to provide as many supportive interventions as we could so that they could be strong for those children. Um, how is a diagnosis made? Um, and this is something that you all will, will learn in your master's program, and you'll have the opportunity to take a DSM class, which is the big manual of all the disorders that we learn about in social work and in mental health. Um, but basically, I think the best, most thorough way to make a diagnosis is <clears throat> through a thorough psychosocial assessment, getting that good history. And I don't necessarily think that a diagnosis can be made in one session. Um, I think it takes several sessions to truly understand a client um, and where they're coming from in order to make a successful and accurate diagnosis. Um, so what happens after a diagnosis is given? Um, so in the setting where I worked after a diagnosis was given and all of my students had to have a diagnosis for Medicaid billing purposes, um, we were able to tailor our treatment plan and our treatment goals towards that specific diagnosis. Um, and then we worked with that student based on uh, the diagnosis that was given to provide the most effective and accurate services um, tailored to meet the needs of that client. 
Okay, so I just gave you a lot of information about school social work, and if you have any other specific questions about school social work, please feel free to let me know. I also have a background in medical social work. Um, I actually still work PRN at one of the hospitals here in Hattiesburg, um, and so in medical social work, of course, just like in school social work, the setting just varies, depends on where you work and the job description, um, but it's a lot of discharge planning, case management, and supportive services to people who maybe are experiencing loss or grief or trauma. Um, so another important area of social work. With that said, I also sent Miss Amanda some handouts that you can look at. The first is just about the profession of social work. And it just talks a little bit about licensing requirements, ASWB, which is how we get licensed, it's the, the entity where we go to take our licensing exams, um, and NASW, which is our national professional organization that we encourage all of our students to join prior to graduation. They have great conferences, great continuing education opportunities, um, and just good information about um, what it takes to be a social worker. It's a good support system for our profession. So take a second to read through that. And then another really um, helpful handout is um, what can I do with this major? A lot of people want to know what they can do as a social worker. And I know I've already talked about school social work and very briefly about medical social work. But I really like this page because it talks about all the different things that you can do and how, where you can get hired. Um, so there's opportunities in research, mental health, veterans affairs, disabilities, um, health care, public welfare, community organization, uh, work in nonprofits, in grant writing, legislation, advocacy work, policy. The list goes on and on, and that is the beauty of social work. There's always something that you can do. Um, and there's just a thousand opportunities. Um, we work with every population, every um, every age, every race, every culture, ethnicity, nationality, um, from the cradle to the grave and everything in between. Um, and so that's also a really unique part of what social workers get to do and who we get to work with. Um, we work with everyone. Um, if you have a specific population in mind that you're interested in, then you certainly have the opportunity to kind of tailor what you do to that group. Um, and the good news is, if you get burnt out on that, you can always change it up and um, focus on a different population um, or group or type of social work. Uh, so really, the opportunities are endless. Um, I always tell prospective students that social work is one of the strongest undergraduate degrees that you can get, and that's because when you finish with the undergraduate degree in social work, you get to take your licensing exam and you are considered a professional social worker. So unlike other majors, um, you know, where you graduate and you have to get a master's in order to work or you have to get a PhD in order to work. Social work is not like that and that is wonderful because a master's degree may not be for everyone and it may not be for everyone right now. Um, and so with a bachelor's degree in social work you can take your licensing exam. We have a licensure prep class here at Southern Miss that prepares all of our students for that licensing exam um, and you can pass that test and be considered a professional and actually get a job, get hired as a bachelor's level social worker um, and there are a lot of job opportunities and agencies out there that will hire bachelor level social workers so that's awesome um, we certainly want you all to get your master's of course with a master's comes more money more opportunity you can practice clinically so the the um, opportunity is just kind of become even even larger uh, even broader with the master's degree um, and with us we have three opportunities for your master's we have a part-time program a two-year full-time program, and an advanced standing program. And with our advanced standing program, if you do really awesome in all of your social work classes, so A's and B's, no C's, top of the class, you can qualify to take an advanced standing entrance exam, which is a comprehensive exam of what you're going to learn in our undergraduate program. And if you score high enough, then in one extra year, you can have your master's degree. Um, so that's really exciting for um, high academic uh, achieving students and students that want to maybe finish um, just a little bit faster to have that master's. Um, so we do offer all three of those options at Southern Miss and um, when it comes time we can certainly put you in touch with the right person to explore those options. The last thing I'm going to go over with you is our degree plan. Um, so this is that three column sheet and on the back it breaks down all of the um, 
the letters and numbers and what they all mean. Um, so this is what you need to know in terms of what do you have to take to get into the program. So I'm gonna just briefly touch on that. The first column is University Core, and these are classes pretty much everyone takes regardless of major. The second column is Social Work Core, and these are not social work classes, but more closely related to our major. So upper level psychology, sociology, human sexuality, um, those classes. And then in the third column, above the dotted lines, are your three pre-social work classes. So let me just point out a couple things before I move forward. Um, the, you'll see boxes next to every class, and the goal is to get every box checked to graduate. Two categories have two boxes next to that. In the first column, your basic lab sciences, and in the second column, your upper level sociology electives. And that just means you have to have two classes from those categories. Um, you'll also see there are some little asterisks, little stars next to some of the classes. In your first column, that's gonna be your math 100 or higher and your sociology, intro to sociology. Uh, I'm sorry, intro to psychology, not sociology. Psych 110. In the second column, your DPH 430, human sexuality, and your de developmental psychology, or at the community college, it's human growth and development. And then in the third column, your three pre-social work classes. And so what those asterisks mean is that those classes have to be done before you get into our program. Um, so, for example, the DPH 430 and the three pre-social works, those are not offered at the community college. So typically, what community college students wind up doing is when they get to Southern Miss, they take a semester to take those classes, and then they're eligible to apply to our program. So what else do you need to get into our program? You can come into our program with three or less of all of those classes remaining, but remember, none of them can be asterisk classes. We also look at GPA. You have to have at least a 2.5 GPA. Um, I say at least because we are one of the fastest growing, most competitive programs across the university. People are learning what social work is and they're saying, I want to do that. And so when it comes to GPA, we're really taking students with a 3.0 or above, um, but you at least have to have that 2.5. A C or above in every class, um, and then a few other things that we look for. Um, your three pre-social work instructors are going to submit evaluations on you after the semester, and they're going to let us know how you participate, your writing skills, your critical thinking skills, your emotional maturity, all of that stuff we take into consideration. And so we'll be looking at those evaluations and recommendations from each of your pre-social work instructors. We also are going to have an online application, which includes two letters of recommendation, and you will have a face-to-face -face interview. So I know that sounds like a lot, and it is a little bit, um, but we will make sure you are prepared for that process when it comes time for you um, to apply to our program. Um, so when you first get to Southern Miss, your major will be declared as pre-social work, and then once you get into our program, it will be social work. You'll have a social work advisor in our department that you will be required to meet with at least once a semester, although we are available way, often, way more often than that if needed. And that's something else that we love about our program. We all have open door policies and all of our instructors and professors here um, want to hear from you. All of our faces, all of our faces, all of our classes are face to face. Um, we don't offer any online classes in our program um, and that's something we take a lot of pride in. We don't believe that you can teach effective social work, competent social work, ethical social work um, in an online setting. So we like to get to know you guys outside of advisement as well, um, and we want um, we want to get to know you. We, we want to uh, really form strong relationships with our students, and we want you to feel comfortable coming to us um, if there's ever an issue throughout the semester. Um, so you will really get to know um, your advisor and your instructors and professors through our face-to-face -face, um, open door classes and advisement process. Um, the program below the dotted lines in that third column is broken down into four semesters. And that is the program. Once you get in, it's I call three academic semesters. At the end of those three semesters, all your classes have to be done. That fourth semester, that final semester, you will be full-time in field. And that is everyone's favorite semester because you finally are getting to put into practice everything that you have been learning and working towards. 
Um, so you'll have an opportunity to meet with our field office in your third semester, let them know a population you're interested in or you're passionate about, and they will work hard to place you um, in an appropriate internship in that fourth semester. So you'll be interning underneath the supervision of a licensed social worker, um, and that's a really unique opportunity and part of us being an accredited school of social work. You'll then come in once a week for field seminar, which is your big capstone class in order to graduate. And it's in that class that we do a lot of writing and processing all of the things that you are doing in the field. And then you get to graduate with your BSW. You'll take your licensing exam and then hopefully all of you will move forward with your master's, if not with a job um, post-graduation. So lots of really, really great opportunities. Um, we also have a new minor um, in our department. Um, I'll also send that information to Miss Amanda. It's called CAST, Child Advocacy Studies. And that's really great for just any social worker, but especially people who want to work in the area of child welfare with children, adolescents, teenagers. So if you are interested in pursuing a minor, we also have that option as well. And we also take a trip to Cuba every summer. Um, so uh, we do participate in our study abroad program at Southern Miss. Um, and the School of Social Work participates in um, the two-week trip in the beginning of the summer to Cuba. Um, and that will serve as a social work elective should you choose to go. So we offer a lot of unique opportunities. We have a very active BSW club, which will um, connect you immediately to um, a community in our department when you get to Southern Miss as a transfer student. We do a lot of community service um, throughout Hattiesburg and um, the Gulf Coast even. They have a club down there as well. Um, and we uh, do a lot of work within the university. Uh, we are very active. In fact, the last couple of years, we've won some outstanding awards for being um, a great uh, involved student organization with excellent student leaders. So we hope that you'll get involved in that as well when you get here. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Um, here is my contact information, rachel.lahasky at usm.edu, and my phone number, 601-266-6952. You can also take a look at our website, which includes information about our degree plan and a list of all of our professors, instructors, and the research that they're doing, which if you're interested in research, policy, presenting at conferences, um, our, our professors welcome that and appreciate student involvement. So you can take a look at all the really cool research um, opportunities that our professors participate in. Our website is www.usm.edu slash social dash work. We hope to hear from you soon. Good luck the rest of this semester and let me know if you would like to meet on campus. Bye.